am starting on the Schwinn Stingray. Now, with it being so close to Christmas, I'm having a very hard time doing these videos. So this video is going to be a little shorter, but I think it's going to be an interesting one. The This bike can, has a suspension uh, system here on the seat, and uh, whenever you sit on the seat, it it really makes it for makes for a very soft ride. Now these are made for someone who weighs probably half as much as I do. I weigh 190 pounds, and if I sit on this, it just collapses. So what I figured that I could do today is I can take these apart and see if I can add a stiffer spring inside of here to, you know, better suit my weight. The other thing is, I wanted to show you how to look up uh, to see if you've got a old vintage Stingray, uh, one of the older Chicago made ones. There's a, a nice place that we can uh, look up and uh, find out what month and year that your bicycle is made. Something else I like to do, these old Stingrays with these forks on here, they really bash the frame really good, uh, and this one is uh, no exception. What I like to do is I get an old grip, and I just cut it a little shorter, cut a little slit in there, and I like to put it on here, so if, if I'm moving the bike around, if it, it bumps into that, uh, that guard there, it doesn't hurt. Uh, the fork or the frame. So uh, let's um, let's find out what year this bike is because I'm not exactly sure. It's like a 19 er, early 70s. I'm going to say 1970, 1972. Uh, but to find out, we just need a computer, and you need to locate the serial number. Now there's a several places that your serial number could be located. On this one, the serial, lo is serial number is located on the head tube here. Now what I like to do is I like to go into Google and just put in Schwinn serial number tool and the first thing that pops up is actually Schwinn serial number tool here and we're just going to push on it and you actually have a, a spot just right down here where you can put in your serial number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just look right here and first couple is it KF and then some numbers I'm just going to push find, and it's that quick. This bike was made October of 1970. See, so it says, congrats, your bike is an original Chicago Schwinn, serial number stamped on October of 1970. That's really cool that this bike was made up in October of 1970. Now if you're using this tool to look up one of your bikes and you're not getting good results, don't get too discouraged because this list is mostly complete but there's a few holes in the system so don't get discouraged if you uh, uh, don't find your bike on the list. Okay, now that we've gone over that, let's go ahead and get to cleaning on this sissy bar and upgrading those springs so I can ride it. Let's get started. As you can see, these uh, shock shocks here actually have a fair amount of rust on there, so we're going to get that cleaned up, and, as well as the uh, uh, sissy bar here. Now when you're starting a project like this, it's super, super, super important to stay organized and, you know, well, just keep track of your stuff. That's part of the organized part. Um, another thing that you can do is instead of taking this 
completely apart, which I've been doing this for almost 29 years, I can take this thing apart and put it back together piece by piece without getting lost. Um, if you haven't been doing it as long as I have, then it's best to, you know, pick something. Uh, you can pick the front wheel, you can take that off, do everything you're going to do with the front wheel, and then you put that front wheel back on. Then you pick the next project, it could be the back wheel, it could be the cranks, it could be the handlebar, anything. Um, pick the next uh, spot to work on, work on that, put it back together. That way you can actually keep track of all your parts and not lose anything. Because I was just looking at some of the prices on the parts with this bike and it's gotten ridiculously expensive. I was trying to find a replacement seat for this because of the, uh, the, the wear and tear on this. First I was just trying to find a matching seat cover. I can't find anything right now. And then I found a couple of replacement seats and they were $400. I'm not putting a $400 seat on this bike. I think it looks great the way it is. It just adds to the character. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take this uh, rear sissy bar off and uh, see about stiffening the spring and uh, getting it cleaned up. All right, let's start. <sighs> let's see. We're going to, let's see, this is a half inch back here. Yep, half inch. And then uh, we've got two 7 16 tools here to uh, remove this. Something else that's really good to do is before starting this project, you should lubricate everything. Uh, lubricate the, the, the spokes, all the nuts and bolts on this, uh, all the like where the seat post put a little oil in there and while you're doing some of this all these parts can be soaking and whenever you get to those spots it'll make your job a lot easier. And this thing's been together 50 years? Wait. 50 years, uh, 51 years, so these parts are getting kind of set in their ways. Now be very careful, I don't know if any parts are going to start falling off with this, but I see potentially a plastic bushing there. So uh, we're going to be very careful. And is this going to come off? No? Okay, seems to be staying in place. I'm going to carefully drop this down. I can see a little bit of metal touching the um, the um, fender, so I'm going to put something in between the seat and the fender so as not to scratch my fender. And we're going to put these in a safe place. I'll just use a paper towel for now. <coughs> and this should just slide up. If it's sticking, don't force it. Just give it a little wiggle. You can actually rotate these to make your life a little easier. Okay.
I can already see that this is probably going to be fun. There's a rolled pin that's going through this uh, um, sissy bar, and I need to push this rolled pin through so I can remove this uh, lower section here. Alright. <coughs> Alright, so there are a couple of pins that are actually inside of this little plastic piece at the bottom and I've already pushed the pins part of the way through and we're just going to finish pulling the pin out here and then it's just a rolled pin that's pressed through the um, this sissy bar let's pull this other one out Okay, and of course whenever I put this together I have to push the pins back through. So uh, let's uh, get over to some more light. Okay, so now that we've got these pins out we can remove the little plastic caps here. And then these should come right off. And they do. Come on, there you go. Okay. And as you can see, these pins press through on the top just like they do on the uh, bottom. So we're going to get this cleaned up, and we're going to see if we can get, let's try to pull this out and see what we're dealing with here. Well, this is not what it's designed for, but I don't use this that much, so let's see if we can... coax this out. Okay, so there's that, and there's the spring. Helps if I do it the right way. Doesn't matter which direction that is. Okay. Let's find some stiffer springs. So uh, let's get these cleaned up. That one looks pretty good. Let's uh, do the next one. And you can actually see the difference between these two. See if we can see a closer look. So let's get this cleaned up.
so much better. Now that we've got these cleaned up really good, we're going to get started on the sissy bar itself. Let's not lose these parts. And look at all that rust right there. We're going to try to get all that off. So, this is so bad, I'm going to just kind of use my knife first and see if I can take it off. Which it seems to be doing a pretty good job right there. I'm going to continue to polish this, um, however, it's, um, I'm going to see if I can find a, uh, a replacement um, sissy bar because this one is, the chrome is flaking off. Uh, it is cleaning up fairly well, but uh, it's just, uh, my hands are looking like glitter because uh, it's uh, not doing too hot. The, the rust is cleaning off good, but uh, the chrome that's what's left underneath the rust is not doing so good. <coughs> so, I've done that. Now, I went to the local hardware store and I got some new springs for it. Let me grab those. Now, here's the original springs that were inside of that, uh, uh, the shock, and I went to the local hardware store, and I found some of these. These are shorter um, and a little bit thinner, however, they do fit on the bar, and they are considerably stiffer, and if I double up the spring, it comes up just a hair bit longer. I think these are going to work pretty well. So what we need to do though is we need to clean out the inside of these and I'm going to use that with a, uh, this is a gun cleaner. It's a rod that I'm going to end up sticking down 
inside of the uh, shock and we're just going to clean it out good before putting it back together. Towel. I don't know what that is, but it stinks. It came with the the gun cleaning kit. That did a good job. Let's do the other one. We're just going to turn the rag around a little bit to get to the clean side. Spray a little more of this smelly stuff on there. It smells like fingernail polish. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this um, Park Tool Green Grease. This is suspension safe. It doesn't damage any plastics. And I'm just going to coat the inside of it. Same thing on the other one. We're going to Put some grease on the lower legs here, where the springs are going to be. I can't wait to get on this and see how it feels, because the other one was entirely too soft. But then again, it was made for a kid. Okay, we're going to put that on, put this on. Then, we're going to put some grease onto the springs themselves. You cannot use too much grease on this application. Well, I guess there are people that can find a way to use too much grease. So I'm just going to put a generous amount. And I don't need to coat the whole thing, just most of it. Because as it works, it'll spread itself around. Okay. All right. So, let's see. Now, if I was paying attention, then I would have realized that I was supposed to put these plastic pieces on first.
even the professionals mess up. Alright. And then we're going to slot these on. And then what we've got to do is we've kind of got to push this through and we've got to be able to push it through far enough that we can get the pin back in and that's going to be fun. <coughs> So we're going to pick one, and let's see which way is the pen going. So we're going to get the pen on there, and then... tap it through. Now what you can do is you can get a socket here and we can compress this again. And uh, we can put the socket here and it'd be nice if you had another person to kind of help you out with this. But um, you know what? I'm going to try to just do this. Okay. There's one. We're going to push this one in. Got to put the cap on first. Tap it in. And you're good got these little plastic caps on here and you want to pop those into place which is not the easiest thing to do A little bit of pressure, a little bit of persistence. There's one. Once you start to get the cap on, there we go.
then you can work your way around and that should snap into place like that. All right, so much stiffer. Now that we have this cleaned up better and we've got the new springs put in this, let's go ahead and put it back on and sit on it and see how it feels. And uh, then we can uh, take the next step. But uh, I'm going to be uh, doing a lot more polishing with this, but I knocked off the worst of the, uh, uh, the rust and uh, not done yet. Putting the new screw, I mean the old screws back in with grease. Be careful about putting your stuff together and don't drop things. All right, let's uh, tighten this back up. Let's get this into position. Not that low. Okay. It's probably going to be about there. I'm going to tighten that up. Make sure this is pretty even. Tighten this one up.
let's see how this feels. Oh, that's so much better. I can put my whole body weight on there, and it's still got spring left. This is perfect. I'll be able to ride this bike, have fun, and it be functional. video leave me a big thumbs up don't forget to tell your friends check out some of the other videos on the corner of the screen don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one thanks <laughs>